it's your boy, B-Boy So. Um, I wasn't going to even speak on this subject or this topic or whatever, but um, last night I got a couple of phone calls, and uh, this morning was a couple of voice messages from some of my fans who were looking to see me at the uh, Bale Soul Music Festival with my homeboy, John Bryant. Um, it is because of those people explain what happened once and one time only. Um, from the beginning, there were issues such that um, what I was told was going to happen and what, what was happening were totally contrary to one another. And, um, needless to say, I was very unhappy. I was very unhappy about it. Um, I tried to remain professional. I isolated myself. I stayed away from people because I didn't want to upset anybody else with who I you know, with what I felt. And furthermore, the person who I was upset with wasn't there. You know, the person who had told me all the things that were supposed to happen that didn't happen wasn't there. So it wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to take it out on nobody else. I was waiting for him to come back and you know, we could talk when the time was appropriate. All right, needless to say, the, trip, the, the whole thing started off all funky. And yeah, I was isolating myself because I, I did not approve of what was going on. All right. The next day comes, day of the show, and I get called for a 12.30 sound check. First of all, I get called for a 1 o'clock sound check. Then at 12.15, I get a call saying, no, they're coming to get us at 12.30. So I wasn't ready. So I just, uh, in my pajamas, threw my headphones on, grabbed my backpack, my notes and everything in for the show, and headed on down. Still kind of just staying to myself. Honestly, just trying to get myself back into a place where I could comfortably play and be creative and be artistic because quite frankly I wasn't in that place, you know what I'm saying having to, you know, deal with me and my wife in our bed our, in our room and somebody walks in our room that morning, you know what I'm saying because there were more people in the room than what I was told was gonna be. Alright, so boom, um, we there, 12.30 1.30, 2.30 now Katz is talking about going to something to eat. Me, I didn't want to eat. I had already eaten. I got up and ate that morning. I was cool. You know, my wife was sitting back in the hotel room waiting for me to come back from the 12.30 sound check. And it's 2.30 and I had yet to even touch a keyboard. So, my, my, my solution was this. Take me back to my room where my car was so I could drive back to the sound check at the appropriate time. Y'all go ahead and eat. That's fine. There was a lady who was assisting us and told me, yo, I'm going to try to find a car to take you back to the hotel. And that was that. I was cool. I was still kind of, you know, like feeling a certain kind of way about how everything was going. I wasn't placing blame on anybody. I didn't know if it was the artist. Again, I did not know if it was the artist who was jacking off or if it was the, the, the promoter, if it was the venue or whatever. All I knew was nothing was going according to what was discussed. Boom. So I wait about 10, 15 minutes, and the lady still hasn't come with this car. So I'm thinking, well, dang, yo, I'm trying to hurry up and get back to the room so I can be back for sound check. So I come back, and I find the artist, and I say, yo, bro, where is this lady at? And, you know, to which he asked me, and, you know, a very valid question. He's like, yo, are you going to sound check me? And I'm like, well, of course. I came out here at 1230 to sound check. And, you know, he was like, well, it's not me. It's not, you know, I'm like, well, regardless of who it is, this is what it is. I was simply trying to find out what the deal was, if I was going to be able to go back to my room or not. Lo and behold, someone in his camp comes from his rear and just start popping off, just talking all this crap about cohesion and, well, you got to be cohesive. First of all, first of all, first of all, it's not a field trip. This is work. You know, I mean, I was trying to do what I had, what I had to do to get to a place where we could be cohesively cohesive in the area that it mattered, which is the music, all right? If I don't feel good, if I'm upset about things, I don't play well, and I'm sure many musicians all over the world, many singers all over the world would agree with that, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, I still get the job done, but it's not, it, it just ain't the same. So long story short, I mean, this person, this person is just popping off, you know, just talking all this, talking all reckless to me, so I'm like, yo, with all due respect, I need you to understand that, you know, I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to John. To which this person re replies to me, you need to understand that I am John. And so, you know, I mean, you got, you got an artist.
artist right here, I'm talking to an artist dealing with a man to man, you know what I'm saying? And, and it wasn't even hostile. And then you got management who walks in who makes it hostile. And then you got the artist standing right there allowing his management to talk to you any kind of way. So needless to say, I was feeling a certain kind of way about it. But even then, even then, I praise God for deliverance because I did not cuss. I did not yell at nobody. I did not even get ugly at all. Although I was justified and wanted to so bad, I did not. I just said, you know what, please don't do that. You know what I mean? I, I try to be calm and, and collective. And then when everything, you know, squared up, when, when, when that person was silenced, it was really a simple conversation. It was like, look, the sooner I get to my room, of course, the sooner I can get back. That's what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? It wasn't no beef. I was frustrated about some things, but that wasn't the time to air that out. You know what I'm saying? So, boom, that goes away. I happened to be talking to other people in management because by this point, I just want to do the gig and go back to my home with my wife. So I'm like, yo, can we make sure the Rangers is taken care of? Because um, I am going to drive back to the soundtrack to the gig from the hotel, and we just want to leave right after. We want, we're we not staying for the remainder of the show. We just want to get back down the mountain, go home. You know, we have a nice home. I'll be enjoying my career, which is why I was so upset about having to stay in some, you know, crazy, you know, situation arrangements or whatever. Because I mean, I was only what two hours away. I could have drove up for the gig. Stayed in my nice home with my flat screens and all of my surround sound and my studio. I could have, you know, done me. All right, boom. So we're talking about the arrangements. And um, one of somebody in management says, well, they're going to pay us after we get back. So we're going to pay you when we get back. That was cool. You know, that was cool. Now, now, now let, me, let me preface this by this. I made a mistake. This was my mistake. I never spoke specifically about the arrangements. But I made the safe assumption, and any musician worth his salt would agree, I made the safe assumption that if we're doing a gig of this size, you know what I'm saying, with all these sponsors, and you're doing all these interviews and pictures and all this stuff, and I'm opening up my home late night for y'all to come and rehearse, another day for band to come and rehearse, and all this stuff, while my kids and wife's upstairs sleeping, all of that, I'm just assumed you're going to pay me something. You know what I mean? And, and like, that's my homie. You know what I mean? It's a business relationship, but it's also a personal relationship. So I wasn't concerned with what he was going to pay me. I just assumed that he was going to pay me something. Or they, I should say. His team, his camp. So, boom. That was my mistake. I'm going to admit, that was my fault. I should have been more on top of that. But you know what I'm saying? Business and, and whatever. Anyway. So, <clears throat> I get told we're going to get paid when we get back. Then, this person who was, you know, doing all the popping off, who, by the way, is known for that, by the way. Um, comes up like, what's the problem? I don't know what this person is talking about because never once was I even talking to this person. So then this person's like, uh, what's the problem? I'm like, what problem are you talking about? This person says, I heard uh, you discussing pay. There is no pay. Your playing up here is your pay. Your experience is your pay. If you need anything, this is all quotes now. If you need gas money, we have $10 for you, and that is it. This meeting is adjourned. Um, what else did she say? She, uh, the person says, uh, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Please get your things because we need the beds. And was nodding at me like, yeah. So I, I still, even then, even being talked to like I was, you know, was a was some type of D-rate keyboard player who had never done anything like that, who doesn't do stuff like that on the regular, first of all. You know what I mean? I didn't even say nothing. I just smiled. And when that person walked away, I turned to the rest of the management. I said, you know what? I'm out. And I want you to tell the artist why. It has nothing to do with the money. It has nothing to do with the shoddy arrangements. It has nothing to do with none of that. But I will not be talked to like I don't like I'm not worth nothing. Period. And you're not paying me. I'm here playing for you for free, helping you out. You're not helping me out by having me come up there and play. You're not helping me out for having by having me put together your show, rehearse your band in my home, drive on my gas. You know what I'm saying? Two hours to go to this place to stay in a room with. Cats on sofas right outside my door, walking in my room in the morning on me and my wife. That's not helping me. That's not paying me. So that's what the deal was, fans. That's why I wasn't there. I mean, that's totally outside of of who I am. I'm not a. I don't bail on people. But at the same time, I gotta stand up for something. You know what I'm saying? It's like this person is known for that, and it's to the point where my boy's situation is being melted. It's, it's, it's becoming a known fact that if you deal with his situation, you got to deal with that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? 
So as for me, man, like I still love my dude. You know what I'm saying? That's my homeboy. Like he's one of the first people I met when I moved here. One of the, I mean, a brother of mine, if you ask me. But at the same time, man, I gotta stand up for myself. Like my 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 soul is not for sale. Like me, the person B is not for sale. My music is. So when you hire me, you get music. You get professionalism. You get me showing up on time. You get me showing up prepared. You don't get to pay for me to talk to me any kind of way. That's not what you're hiring me for. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I'm not talking to you. Especially when I was not talking to you. Everything was clear. Everything was kosher. Yeah, I was upset about some things, but that was on me. And I was going to deal with that at the appointed time. But when I'm having a conversation with a man who's level-headed enough to have that conversation, and you come up and start popping off, that's on you. That's on me. And I'm not going to argue with you. The old me would have cussed you smooth out. And truth being told, it's, 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 it's out of respect for the artist that I didn't go off on this particular person. Real talk, out of respect professionally and respect as a bruh. You know what I'm saying? That's why I didn't go off. Instead, I just decided to leave because I saw me going off. You know what I'm saying? It's only so much I'm going. I'm new at this whole being patient thing. I'm new at this whole don't snap because somebody talking to you crazy thing. And I praise God for it. But at the same time, I know my limits. So when I got to my limit, I left. Simple as that. Now, how do I feel about it? I feel kind of messed up about it because, like I said, dude is my homeboy. I really believe in his project. I believe in his talent. I believe in his situation. But at the same time, like I said, man, you can't just pop off at me any kind of way. I do feel a certain kind of way. If anything, I feel a certain kind of way towards him because it's like, yo, man, I'm your dude, man. Don't let your people talk at me like that. Don't let your people, you know what I mean? Don't, don't let your people handle me like that. Like, real talk, like, that ain't cool. Really, it ain't even your people. I got to be correct. Let me be right and exact. It's one person in this in, in my dude's camp that really has potential to harm and, and, and stall his career. You know what I'm saying? With that aside, that's why I wasn't there. You know what I mean? I got phone calls immediately like, yo, I'm watching so-and-so-so on stage. Why you ain't there? And at the time, I was just like, oh, no, nah, man, you know, some things went down. You know what I mean? But after I got the, the third voicemail, I started to realize, okay, you know what I mean? Some people who, who really do check for me, who, who really do like respect what I do musically, were there to see me on the strength of, you know, they like what I do. On the strength of, I recommend it, you know what I'm saying, my, my dude to them because he's hot. My boy got a hot situation. He's a dope writer. He's a dope singer. You know what I mean? His talent will take him anywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's just that the business of it all, I just fear how long he'll stay there. You know what I mean? I just fear how long, you know what I mean? And it's sad because it ain't even him. This one of the most humble, meekest dudes you'll ever meet, yo. Like, that's what was blowing me. I being talked to so crazy by somebody who represents somebody who don't even, that was totally contrary to who this person is. You know what I'm saying? You can't have people around you misrepresenting you. You know what I mean? That person is a representation of you. So if they going off snapping on people who there to help you, that comes off as you allowing it. It comes off as that's, you know, something you cool with. So yeah, I felt a certain kind of way about that. But then again, it's like, hey, I got I to gotta respect myself more than anything. I don't care what nobody else do or say. I got to respect myself, cat. You know what I mean? You can't just, you can't do that. You can't just come off of me any kind of way. So uh, I hope I didn't lose a friend. I hope I didn't lose um, a business relationship as a result of this. But at the same time, if I did, then it really wasn't a friend. And it really wasn't a, a, a tight business relationship. Because, um, you know, that was just foul. You know what I mean? And then later I found out that the other band members was told they was getting paid. So, yeah, man. But all that to the left, to my fans, to the people who, who check for B-Boy. So, the people who, who sign up for the email list, the street team on Facebook, on Reverb Nation. My sincere apologies for not being there. Um, you know what I'm saying? Please forgive me. You know what I mean? I, I will be more selective and more uh, detailed in my dealings. So, it's nothing like this will ever happen again. Um, to my boy John, John, I love you like a brother, man. I'm sorry this all went down like that, but at the same time, you gotta check your camp, yo. You gotta check your camp. And if you if you really be honest with yourself, I didn't go off on nobody. I was going off on. Them. So with that said, man, I still love you. If you mad at me, I love you anyway. If you if you ain't mad at me, let's chop it up, go shoot some pool or something, man. But um, that's what happened. All right. It's B boy. I'm signing off. I love y'all. Peace out.